started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Hello friends, welcome back to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so excited you're back today. I have with us Angelica Prather. She is gonna be speaking life to us today. And I'm so excited to introduce you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Josie, and the family who's listening. Thank you, listeners. <laughs> yes, so please tell us a little bit about your journey and about yourself and your story. Awesome. I am Angelica Prather. I am an income strategist for hairstylists and a business coach. And I help people that are hairstylists through my signature program, Charger Worth Academy. And what we do in Charger Worth Academy is we get you to grow your income without working more, right? So I have this less is more model that I created for myself that became the blueprint to help other beauty professionals kind of create that same lifestyle, right? I am also a mother of two beautiful children, five and four, they are 14 months apart. So your mama was busy, okay? But um, before I was any of those things, I was behind the chair for 20 years. I was a salon owner for 10 years and an educator for 10 years as well. And so I have a well diverse in the beauty industry. I love it, it's one of my favorite industries. And I also have a hair care product line, Robin Laurel and company that's named after my mom who is deceased and actually started her journey in the hair care industry, but didn't get a chance to fulfill it at the age of 31, she passed away. So I'm just picking up the torch and I'm all about legacy. And that's why I am now helping other hairstylists live out their legacy, like actually live it now and create that future for themselves. So that's just a little bit about me <laughs> oh my gosh you are doing all the things busy mama yes <laughs> and helping and inspiring so many in the process so i'm gonna just get into it as hairstylist being behind the chair i love that the first thing you said is less is more my motto was always work smarter, not harder. I am no longer behind the chair myself, but I was in a cosmetologist for 10 years, 11 years, 11 years actually, <laughs> and behind the chair for eight of those and teaching for two. So I can totally relate with all that you were saying and what goes with all that. And before we start recording, you were speaking of being the CEO when you go into the model of coming from being at a salon to being a booth renter. Mm -hmm. And I would love to speak on that because I know that that's a big transition. Yeah. There is like a roadmap that a lot of people follow in our industry and that becomes this busy, right? This busy. And I have something that I teach all the time about the busy framework. When you're transitioning where you, maybe you came from school, right? And then your goal was to either work in a salon, get your training up and then move into booth renting. A lot of times when I see people go into booth renting, they don't see themselves as a CEO, mm -hmm. right? They still just put the cap on as I'm a hairstylist mm -hmm. and their focus is building a clientele, but it's not focused on building a business. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that ends up happening is I always see people, you know, go to all the technical skill classes. I am not knocking technical skill classes. That is how we keep up with our trade and our profession. But there is another part of it that you have to step into the CEO. Mm -hmm. Number one, you're the CEO of your life. So what do you want your life to look like while you're behind the chair, right? So that's the yes. first part. Your second part is the CEO of the business, right? This is a business, right? I don't care. You love connecting with people, but you still have to make a profit. Mm -hmm. And so I'm big on teaching stylists how to make a profit, how to pay yourself first, but also how to have reserve income. And so some of the busy framework that I see a lot, a lot of people who are going behind the chair even though you said work smarter, right? That's your mm -hmm. philosophy. People just don't know what that looks like in our industry because we're watching other people, right? So the busy ends up being broke, underpaid service yearly because they're so focused on, let me build the clientele. That 
becomes a rat race. So that means you're chasing clients rather than saying, what's the foundation of my business? Mm -hmm. And what is it gonna stand on? If I'm a hairstylist today, what does it look like five years from now? Right. What does it look like 10 years from now? And what does it look like 20 years from now? Mm -hmm. And so that transition of being a booth renter, it's all exciting, right? Because you're like, oh, I own my own seat. Yes. But here's a different thing. When you're a booth renter, you're actually in an establishment, right? So you're in an establishment with a name that is in someone else's business. Mm -hmm. You have to marry the vision. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't just rent a booth because you can afford it. You have to make sure that it aligns with the clientele that you want to attract, aligns with the lifestyle that you as a CEO. And do I marry the vision of the actual owner of the salon? Right. right. You can't rent something if you don't really understand the value of what you're coming into. And mm -hmm. I feel like people that are just renting don't see that correlation and just like I can afford it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to rent. And then they find themselves a little overwhelmed and burnt out. And so that's what I love to do to help people to avoid the burnout. Yes, <laughs> so. and that's a big one. And I love how you were speaking to that vision because that vision, whether you're whatever business that model that you're going on to, or even as a mother, like having that vision and casting that vision five years, 10 years, 20 years is so important because then it gives you little, you can take little steps to get you to where you want to go versus like getting in that rat race of what you were saying of just like getting clients, getting clients, getting clients, and just putting on the hat that I'm now owning my business, but I'm not that CEO. So yeah. I love that you spoke to that because that is so important to have a vision for the future and yeah. whatever business that you're on, that if you're listening to this and you're not a hairstylist, having that vision is just so big and so important. I love also how you were speaking to about having that legacy, having, yeah, it's just that vision for the future. That's the yeah. biggest thing. And so how can somebody step into that vision for the future? And I can only talk from experience and in what I teach. A yes. lot of times when we're tapping into the vision, it stays in our mind. We never write it down, right? Mm -hmm. And so people will do vision boarding and different things like that. And then it just kind of goes into the, mm -hmm. to the wayside. But I do something called live vision boarding. And it's not my idea, it's my husband's idea. I actually would go to the places of where I can see myself at, mm -hmm. right? And then I would actually say, okay, this is where I want to be. Now let me take the actionable steps, right? Mm -hmm. What is it going to take me to get there? And so there's a little bit of laser focus, right? There's that auditing with relationships, with who I'm going to be around. I'm going to put myself in that place, right? The legacy of where I'm desiring to go has small bite sizes, right? I'm never going to reach where I desire to go right away. There's like small steps. And so I'm a firm believer in writing down the vision and making it plain. See, what we do is we jump. We're like, oh, in 10 years, I want to be making this. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can say it, but do you have the actionable steps? Mm -hmm. So I would say take the bite sizes. And I actually like to go, if I seen a storefront, let's say, and I'm like, one day I would love to own a storefront, right? A storefront salon. Now what I'm going to do is ask myself how, mm -hmm. how and when. When do I want to do that, right? And so the how is I'm going to start positioning myself to find out everything it takes financially and from either getting a mentor or actually paying someone to help me get those results yes. because that's the goal and desire of how to get there. Same way we take technical skills, you should be taking business skill classes yes. to get to own those things. You can't just say, I want to own this salon, you know, the storefront right. or salon front, but I don't have the, the resources, right? So what are the resources it's going to take? How much is it going to cost me? How much of my life am I going to be in mm. this storefront? Those are the questions that you have to actually put in paper. So I usually go to the destination, I speak it out loud, and mm. then I do the backward steps. Mm -hmm. I write the vision out step by step, and it ends up becoming like living your legacy. Right? Oh, so. I love that. That just gave me chills <laughs> because it's so true that you have to put yourself completely in that vision, in that imagination. You have to be all in it. And then once you start working backwards, it starts to fall into place so much easier. Then if you're coming from the place of like, I am here now and I want to go there, it feels impossible 
that yeah. there doesn't seem like it's even doable but yeah. I love the idea and that's how I vision too is looking to the future and then coming back yeah then it's like you could see the steps a little bit more clear yeah and actually go stand in it right go stand somewhere my husband and I at one point wanted to work on the beach right and mm -hmm. we lived in California and so what we would do we say one day we want to live have a house on the beach mm -hmm. and so what we would do is take our laptops and go sit on the like local beaches where other people's houses were right and so when they would have open house tours back when before COVID, we would actually go into those beach homes which there wasn't a lot of them but we would actually just go and walk through and say okay this is what it would look like and mm -hmm. then take a picture right that is real life vision boarding mm -hmm. not just cutting out someone else's fantasy picturing yourself there so we would go and take a picture and be like this is going to be us one day yes. right because that's <laughs> live vision boarding and i feel like if you can feel it then it feels like okay i know what that feeling like i don't live here now but one day i'm gonna be right you hear people say manifest i'm a firm believer in you can call it manifestation or you can call it god right mm -hmm. but i feel like what god has for you is for you and he doesn't give you these dreams or these goals so that they can't be realistic right mm -hmm. they're innate in you they're like birth in you it just takes work to get there and you got to be realistic with yourself so i like the version of, of live vision board but mm -hmm. we would go sit on the beach take our laptop and then just be having the conversation about what it looks like and what yeah. our lives would look like and so i just challenge everybody who might be listening if there's something that you want Want, go try it out right you can try it and then you realize i don't really this ain't the life for me like i'm not good like at one point we thought we went on tesla we sat and i was like mm, no my coins can go somewhere else like it just didn't it's a car right it just didn't feel that great go and do live vision boarding you'll be surprised of what it what makes it feel. feel so real just even now like putting yourself into it like physically putting your body there because yes. then you're not manufacturing that emotion you're not manufacturing it and like you said it's not somebody else's picture in your dream it's like you there right yes. there and so i love that i encourage <laughs> yeah i'm gonna try it and i encourage all you guys to try it as well so i'm gonna go back to speaking a little bit to our entrepreneur yes. that is feeling super overwhelmed they're feeling that i can't do this they're feeling for me, I call it being planted. Like you are at the, the planted state where you have to get over that dip, over the initial hard part, but it feels like you're never going to get over that. Right. It feels like you're never going to see that end of that tunnel. What would you say to that entrepreneur that is right there today? That is at that moment where they are planted, they're under the ground and they just can't see the light. Uh, you know, that's actually a really good question. And it's something that I actually lived out and something that even to this day, I am at a season where I'm planted. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm planted and I'm walking and I'm watering the seed. Right. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because I have this long list of things that I would like to accomplish myself personally, personally, professionally. And so when you are underground, what I can say when you're underground, there's something that's special that's happening. You're mm -hmm. being molded. Right. There's a molding. There is literally grace that's happening when nobody knows what you're doing. That's when the magic is actually happening. It doesn't feel great. But greatness always feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I'm, I'm speaking for myself as well. So I'm being totally transparent with you guys, okay? But I always think about a bamboo plant. Underground, it takes almost three years, right? For it to form something. But when it grows, right? You still have to water, you still have to do mm -hmm. everything. When it grows, it grows at a speed of lightning. And so I always say when you're underground and you're planted and you can't see the light, right? Think about, are you prepared for how fast growth looks like. Does your life mirror what you desire? Because there's a grooming stage, right? So that feeling of like, what am I doing this for? Why am I doing this? Am I serving the right clients? Whatever it could be, you're underground for a reason. And so you are basically the farmer who's planted the seed. The seed has to be watered. And I think there's something in this waiting period that we don't like. But the waiting is where the grooming is. And that's where you get stronger and stronger and stronger. And when you're strong, then the success, if you want to, now the plant is growing and the success is thrown on there, you're able to sustain it. See, yeah. we want instant gratification, but can we sustain mm -hmm. the gratification that's coming along with it? Mm -hmm. And so that's something I constantly tell myself every day. The things that I have on my list, they're bigger than even where I am today. They're mm -hmm. so big that I'm like, okay, 
can you sustain that version? Can your kids sustain that mm -hmm. version of you, right? Because you're walking to a new season of life, right? And that entrepreneur that is like, man, I'm doing all of this and nothing is coming out of it. Look around you and say, could my lifestyle handle it? Could the person I am today handle that? Mm -hmm. If you just have a real candid conversation with yourself, you'd be like, oh, heck no, I can't do that. Not today. <laughs> my mind ain't strong enough for that, you know? Because a lot of times we want the reward, but we don't know, we don't want the process to get the reward. So I would just say, be encouraged, literally keep surrounding yourself. You're like feeding your mind with the positivity because mm -hmm. the goal that's birthed inside of your bosom is going to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just there, right? It's going to happen. Like I will speak to hair stylists, the clientele that you desire, you just have to keep showing up as a CEO, molding yourself, surrounding yourself with greatness, right? Even if they're not reachable, but they might be online, keep mm -hmm. studying what they're doing, find out the process, right? Because a lot of times we're just looking from an external lens, but there's internal work that had to happen for mm -hmm. that person to reach that success so that you can actually even know what their name is. So I would just say, stay true to what you're doing. The path is set for you and mm -hmm. you will reach it, but enjoy the process doesn't feel nice, but enjoy it. <laughs> oh, yes. So there's a few things that you said that I'm going to have to highlight because it is so true. It doesn't feel comfortable. It feels it's that discomfort that we want to get through it as quickly as we can. And you're saying like, that is when something is being birthed. That is when the magic is happening. That is when you're, when you're planted and you're the planter, you put your, you planted the seed and you are in charge of watering that seed. And mm -hmm. I love that because it's so true. And also sustaining it. If we were to shoot up as fast as we are envisioning our future, you're right. How we're not that person who is doing that thing, right? Mm -mm, not at all. And so <laughs> it's going to come crashing down because it's going to be too, it's going to be scary. Now the overwhelm is going to be even bigger. So yes. I think if we can start to remember that, that changes and that shifts and that changes the game for us. Yeah. And I like to add something too. I'll just tell this quick story. Yes. When I first started in the career, of being a hairstylist, I my goal was to own a salon. Mm -hmm. I tried three times, money invested, like three times. And the door, I mean, every single time that I like put money down for the storefront, literally something would happen and I would get mm -hmm. every dollar back. I was disappointed the first, I was really disappointed the first time. The second time I was like, oh my God, this is horrible. Third time I'm like, okay, maybe I should just give up on this dream, right? And, but then fast forward, I wasn't ready. I was mm -hmm. so not ready because there were so many things that I did not know what it took because I wasn't looking from a different type of lenses. Mm -hmm. As I matured and evolved in my career, I started to identify what are the ideal clients that I need to serve, right? Mm -hmm. Who am I as a stylist? Like a lot of times in the first five years, you just don't know who you are, mm -hmm. right? So we want the success, we want the big clientele and all this other stuff, or you wanna be a booth renter, or you wanna be a suite owner, and a lot of times you find yourself in overwhelm or discomfort because there's a lot that you just don't know, but you mm -hmm. rush the process. And so there's something about that waiting period. Every time you rush, you'll find yourself in a season where mm -hmm. there's a lesson to be learned. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot of lessons. Thank God I got my coin back. But, <laughs> but it was definitely a you know, hard lesson to learn. So I think sometimes being patient with the wait process is really crucial. It's like that muscle. You're getting that patience muscle. You're getting that discomfort muscle. And you're knowing your strength in those moments. You're knowing yeah. how powerful you are in those moments of waiting. Yeah. The wait is uncomfortable, but it's so worth it. Yes, <laughs> I don't <absolutely>. like it. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> I'm right there. <laughs> I agree. And another thing you said that I want to highlight and speak on is that inner game. That inner game. I think right now with the way the world is and what's going on in that world, in this world that we're living, there's so much. Yeah. And our inner game as an entrepreneur, as a mother, as just being in this world mm -hmm. is so huge. And I would love for you to speak on that. So you said your inner, right? Yeah, your inner yeah. game, your inner work. Because okay. you were saying, we're speaking yeah. earlier to that. Yes. Yeah. This is a, the thing about that inner work, that inner man, that inner being, right? I didn't just wake up and was like, yo, I'm about to take over the world. I'm about to help a lot of people. I'm from New York, y'all. So if y'all hear my little like, go hard, 
It's just my New Yorker in me. <laughs> that inner being is a developing, like you said, a muscle. Mm -hmm. And so I always like to call it a calling. We all have a calling and a, des a destiny, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I think motherhood is, is ministry. You're like grooming a person. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, some days I wake up, I'm like, okay, you got to check yourself. Your kids will be a good reflection mm -hmm. of the imperfections that you have. Mm -hmm. Yes. just facts right i think when it comes to developing and like looking inside a lot of times we're so focused on the exterior like especially for hairdressers how we look on the outside and mm -hmm. stuff like that i would say one way to like see how you are is look at your circle look at your either your mom squad look at your family dynamics look at your friends look at just take an audit I'm a big component of auditing certain areas in my life. And if I feel a little discomfort, I usually say, okay, if I'm lacking maybe growth in an area where I can't speak up, I maybe don't have good boundaries, mm -hmm. right? Then where did I learn that from, right? I'm always just assessing. I probably got that from being a people pleaser in doing hair, right? Because we are aiming to please our clients, right? And I would say every hairdresser is a people pleaser mm -hmm. if they don't realize that, right? But then it comes, I'm shifting, right? I have shifted for years now. I'm now helping hairstylist. And I realized I had to create new boundaries because I'm talking to a different completely audience, right? It's just different things. But that inner being is a constant work. You never get to this place of perfection, right? So if there is something that you're like looking and you're like, now I feel whole. That thing about wholeness is just the fact of accepting every part of you. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm a firm believer that you don't get whole, you get well. <laughs> if that makes sense. You get well with knowing who you are, how you are, how you're going to develop. And I think it does take work. It's an everyday process. I mean, some days I'm just going to keep it all the way real. Some days I'd be like, listen, the way I'm set up today is <laughs> I'm not feeling it. Right. And so I give myself the grace to say, I'm firing myself today. Mm -hmm. This is not my best day. That doesn't take away from the work that I'm doing, but I'm just very honest with myself first. And I think sometimes we're just not honest with ourselves to say today is a a bad day and if there's multiple bad days then you need to go get seek other help right but for me i know that when there's a day that i'm like i'm off my game i give myself the grace to say all right angelica on the inside is like having a, a, a mental day take it fire yourself for the day i'm big about firing yourself for the day and my kids even know that's like mommy needs to fire herself yep mommy needs to fire herself today and they're like okay mommy's gonna have a time out yes mommy's gonna have a time out go sit down and they're like all right and we're good we just have this moment it's a great moment my kids are seeing me as the human being they see me pushing towards purpose but they also see me as the mom and then they see me as the person mm -hmm. and like i said before even answering your question was your kids are a great reflection mm -hmm. i didn't really start having those real real raw conversations with myself until i started to see it in my kids mm -hmm. like my frustration or like you know me trying to push and like make things happen for them, it really slowed me down to look at myself in the mirror and say, okay, are you trying to be whole? Are you trying to be perfect? Or are you trying to be well? And I, I choose to seek well. Oh, I love that. I love the so many things that you said. I love that you say you fire yourself for the day. You're having a mental day, you take it. Yes. And that grace. Yes. <laughs> that is needed. The reflection of it being in your kids and you speaking to yourself, like, is this what I need? Is this how I want to be in the world? And changing it and giving yourself that permission to to transform as you're doing it, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think one thing, like, you know, you hear this buzzword coaching, right? And coaching is another way I, I like to look at it as a guide, right? And you're guiding people that you have solved a problem. But uh, one thing that has highlighted for me is as I'm supporting other beauty professionals and I'm looking at their lives, every time you say yes to a new process or a new version, there's a growth that happens within you. So mm -hmm. even though I'm supporting hairstylists I see such a growth in myself because I'm watching them blossom, right? Mm -hmm. I'm constantly growing on my end, mm -hmm. but and I'm being fed from my sisterhood, right? Mm -hmm. That helps me stand. But I create a space for them to be that sister and to grow and develop. And I always say when that door opens, like we're talking about your pricing and stuff like that, but when that door particularly opens, it opens other doors for you to say, I'm not whole in certain areas. So let's go get well, right? Let, let me go get my wellness check. Mm -hmm. And we do have that language in my coaching program. You got to fire yourself. Are we firing ourselves? What's the day that we're firing ourselves? <laughs> and we stick to it, right? That's called what we call scheduling. I don't want to put that on another woman's box because we all have a to-do list. Let's just say, let's do our 
wellness check. Mm -hmm. You're going to fire yourself for the day. <laughs> so what does that look like for you for a day where you are like, I am firing myself the day and your children. And how do you have that conversation? Because we have a lot of moms that are listening to the show and I love this so much. And I think if that shift can happen for somebody today, it would be a game changer. Oh, big time. It was a game changer for me. Well, I would say it started with obviously the conversation with myself. I'm married. I had to have that conversation with my husband mm. at the, what it looks like to be fired for the day, right? Because men are not mind readers. So <laughs> it had to really start with him to let him know today is just one of those days. I just, I'm going to withdraw. And then he knows to kick up in gear. It's not something that just plans. And it's not like I wake up every day like that. I usually wake up like ready to conquer the world every day. But it's, it's a few times out of the the month that I'm like, okay, I need a wellness check. And we, we give each other the grace to do that, both of us, because I just think that makes our marriage very well. <laughs> so that's just, but what does that look like for someone who may not do that? Right? So let's say you wake up. I'll just like to give real scenarios because yes. you're rushing to get your kids out to school, right? You find yourself rushing a lot more and then you're feeling that overwhelm. A lot of it is because we didn't plan. That's usually why we're rushing, right? Because we just didn't plan. And when I noticed that I wasn't planning out, even down to the smallest details, like my me time, right? Like I literally was like, okay, this is mommy day. This is mom time. This is, you know, all of those different things. That's when I found myself not being well. And so for me, I would literally just say, okay, if I woke up and I'm feeling, I just had it, I'll just keep it real. I don't know when the show is going to air, but like three days ago, it was like a Sunday. And usually on Sundays, like family day, we go to church and I woke up and I said, I'm really tired. Like my body is still feeling exhausted. There is nothing for us to do. So mommy's taking a wellness day. I told my husband, I said, I'm just not, I want to rest today. And he said, okay, I got the kids. And that's just that balance that we have. Mm. Now for those who are single, cause I know there's a lot of moms that are single out there. I was raised by single women and I didn't get it right. But I learned this from my aunt. She was raising five of us. So after my mom died, she then took me and I, I'm a sibling of three, it's three of us. Mm -hmm. And so we got not separated, but they were with my grandmother. My two brothers and then my aunt was with me. And she would literally peek her head out the door and she said, it's my time. Like mm -hmm. literally it was no conversation. And she's like, you guys are fed, you guys are well. Even when we were very little, she just showed us how to be independent and she would make us occupied. Like, I just wanna encourage moms that are either single or married. It's okay to not overdo. Like your kids in one day are not gonna die because you just laid on the couch. Because you may have given them maybe their iPad, maybe they were able to jump all over the house and do all the fun stuff while you just rest it's okay like you don't have to be perfect patty be okay with saying today is not a good day and i'm gonna sleep or i'm gonna just sit on the couch while they just have fun and color mm -hmm. and be not engaged because my babies are very little we started having that conversation mommy wants to be fired today and i explained to them what does mommy mommy time look like so now it's just a part of their language just like when they get a timeout i, I tell them mommy needs a timeout so they say mommy go get a timeout yeah mommy's gonna get a timeout <laughs> And I'm okay with that. Start the language, right? You know, you just, your kids can see you as human beings and mm. not like this robot. I don't want my kids to see me as perfect, Patty. I want them to see me as real, raw, and relevant. And that's going to prepare them for life. 100%. That is so true to all of that. For me growing up, I did not see my parents struggle. They did mm. that behind closed doors. So to us, it looked like they had everything together. They were just 100% perfect. The house was always clean. Everything was always done. And as I grew up, I'm like, how did you do this? And yeah. so that's even manifested with my siblings. Like the way I see my brothers has so many unrealistic expectations of their wife because of what they saw my mom accomplish mm. with five kids and being perfect. Yeah. And so seeing that rawness, sets your kids up for the future. Yeah, yeah. I, and it's so funny, people come to my house, it's like, do kids live here? I'm like, you definitely do. <laughs> we treat our kids like a part of, they are part of the family. They are a part of the legacy and we all are doing their part, right? So we hold our kids just as accountable, cleaning and, and we make it fun for them so that we don't have to, first of all, I'm not gonna be a slave, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know who said motherhood had to be a slave, but I mm -hmm. thought we were raising men and women, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I'm a firm believer that one day they're gonna have to do it for themselves. So 
make them a part of the family and not just like, let me do, do, do for them. Mm -hmm. I make them do a lot and be considerate of others. And so that's something that we have instilled in our kids. But people come over all the time. It's like, your house is clean. I'm like, well, the last I checked, that's their toys. And if God bless them with it and they don't want to keep it, we can go bless somebody else. So if it's on the floor, it belongs to someone else. I mean, that's just the model that we're having in our house. Mm -hmm. That might not work for everybody, but I don't know about you, but these kids are going to get old and grow up and then it's going to be me and my husband. So I have to invest in the, all of the relationships. Yes. And my family made it look easy too, being single, but I'm like, the way my kids are set up, I don't know who could do this. <laughs> like, I'm not set up for I'm like, thank God for my husband. Are you, you know, I don't know if I could do it by myself. I mean, the pivotal shift for me was having children. I was single most of the time in my career. And I cracked the code of making six figures as a stylist very young. So I did that year after year after year. So that wasn't, that wasn't a, pinnacle reach for me. But when I became a mother, and that was the last four years of my career at like 16 years, I was single, right? I had no kids. So I was able to invest in my career very, very strategically. And then I became a mother and I was like, I'm not going to sacrifice my income because last I checked, kids cost, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> my responsibilities have increased, but how could I not compromise my time as a mom and not compromise my time as a uh, you know, making an income. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to work eight days a month throughout the year, right? So eight days a month, still with my kids, still really present and still make six figures. And so um, I'm passionate about showing people that particular blueprint. Mm -hmm. I don't, in my program, I don't claim that you're going to make six figures, but I just show you the less is more model and you work there, right? That's the point. And so motherhood really changed me. That's when I stepped into my purpose work and say, you know what, more moms, because most of us that are in the industry are women mm -hmm. and we're going to become a mother at some point. And you shouldn't have to compromise between the two. You shouldn't have to choose, but there is a way that you can do it that works for your lifestyle and doesn't have to look like anyone else's. Mm -hmm. So super passionate about that as well. Yes. And that is such a, I love that we're shifting to this because that is so important. We think we have to choose. We think that we can either have the love of our life, the family of our life and be the mom, you can or mom. we can be a working mom and then have to sacrifice the home life. Yeah. And I love that you're speaking to, we get to have both. Yeah. It just goes back to that live vision boarding. Like I knew that I was going to retire from the chair at 20, 20 years. Right. So I already had that. That was the number. I was like, I, I don't got it in my body past there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I always wanted to be married and I always wanted to have children. And there's this horrible thing that goes in our industry. I know you probably have heard it. it's like, you know, get married with some guy with good benefits. <laughs> I know that's horrible, but that's a, that's something that people have advised, right? And so when my husband and I got together, he was adding to my life. He wasn't, it wasn't the benefits. I came into him well, you know, I bought the best version that I could. And so we added to each other's lives. But once we had kids, I was like, okay, I still love this industry. I still want to be a part of this industry. I'm a newly married woman and your clients want to grow with you too. They mm -hmm. were really excited about me getting married. They were really excited about me having children because I said I never wanted to have children. So that was very interesting to watch, right? And they stuck beside me from two maternity leaves. I mean, my maternity leaves were extremely long and I had resources to support myself, right? While I was on maternity leave. So I didn't come back and was stressed out, but motherhood really shifted the game for me. And I felt like I can have it both. And I wanted to show people how they can do the same, right? Have that freedom as well. And so I feel for women, sometimes they don't look at their natural gifts and talents mm -hmm. as something that could be lucrative. And so that struggle and then not having the right community that can help you and show you and support you, that's all important, but you can have it all. Mm -hmm. I mean, if God gave it to you, you just have to find that new way and that new version of yourself mm -hmm. and be okay with saying RIP to the old version. And that comes back to investing in yourself, yes. investing in that vision and finding that person or that thing that has been there before you and is able to like ease you along so that you're like we were talking about earlier, you're fueling your mind, you're fueling your soul and you're getting yeah. fired up and you're staying lit up about where you're going. 
And again, that life visioning and putting yourself in that image and that picture. And if you could try it on even better, <laughs> <laughs> try it on. I like that. Try it on even better. And I love that you're speaking to, like, we do not have to compromise. We get to, we get to decide yeah. the life that we're going to live. And it's up to us to make the decision whether, yeah, if God puts it on your heart, whether you're going to say, yes, I'm all in, (laughs) I'm ready for this ride. (laughs) It may not always be easy, but I'm going to go for it. (laughs) Yeah. And you said it, it's not going to always be easy. And I don't claim that it was easy. I mean, I have good days. I have some Mm -hmm. peaks and I have some valleys. I have some grow moments and I have some glow moments. Mm -hmm. And the places where I have to grow, that takes a little bit more work. And Mm. the places I'm glowing in, obviously finding that good work-life balance for myself, that's always important. And I think everyone needs to be okay with looking at their lives from their lenses Mm. and not from whatever this quote unquote society says your life should look like, whether you're a hairstylist or you're in the entrepreneurship game. I think sometimes we're looking to the right and the left and we're not looking at our own path Mm. and the path that we once set. So make your, I would say, make your blueprint, right? Your unique path of success, make your blueprint. In our hands, it's in your yes. hand. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So good. And so I would love to speak a little bit about that work-life balance. That one is not an easy one. No, it's not. I would just tell you that every day is different, right? Mm-hmm. Motherhood, you, sometimes our feelings don't feel the same. My husband and I, he's military, so he's very rigid. And as a hairstylist and creative, (laughs) I was like, boy, you better get out of here with all that scheduling. (laughs) I was like, this is not gonna work for me. But it's so interesting that I started to adapt. Like there was things that he added to my life. Now I schedule my clients. I had a very good, healthy balance, but because I was so scheduled in my business, I wanted to be free with my motherhood, right? I was like, I'm gonna let my kids just, we can have a good time. We, you know, I put them to bed at a certain time. So they were very rigid in certain areas. But what he had me do was an exercise like, okay, what does it look for our life? And we do it at every season. And we kind of write it out. Like, what do we want this season to look like? I just transitioned from California to Georgia. And the kids now have grandparents that are really active to help us, right? Even while I'm sitting here talking to you, we have support, right? My Mm -hmm. daughter is not in school. So I kind of wrote out what the life would look like. How many days am I going to invest in my business? And how many days am I going to be permanently active in parenthood, Mm -hmm. right? And then how many days am I going to be active in my marriage? And and that doesn't mean I get to take a break. I'm not saying that, (laughs) right? But it goes back and this might not work for everybody, but it just, it becomes more realistic. I don't like to do lists. I can't stand them. Don't give me a lot to do, right? (laughs) But I know that if I work on just Monday or just Wednesday and just Thursday, then that's the day that I'm going to be working. And I set hours in that particular different thing. And I don't try to do anything else outside of that. Mm -hmm. So just finding that you can plug into work and go dive into it. I can get a lot done in four hours and I could if I did a whole eight hour day and I'm just wasting my time. And so I just block out certain things that I'm capable of doing. And then the rest, I feel like I have a freedom because I know that my mind is like 10 to two is everything for work three days out of the week. Everything else, my laundry, my this, all of those different things that are real life things, I just particularly do it on those days. If it don't get, you know, if I don't get done, I'm very strategic about the things that I'm doing. And that is the lifestyle that I adapted from him. I get up every day at 5 a.m. to make sure that I have time for myself. That's a that's a sacrifice. But as a mother, if I don't do that for myself and pour back into myself, then I'm always giving. I'm giving to my students that's in charge of Earth Academy. I'm giving to my children. I'm giving to my husband. I just realized that I had to find time to commit to myself. And the best time for me was at 5 a.m. before everybody else get up and I hear the word mommy or I hear anything <laughs> else. So I would just say that work-life balance is really how you want it to look. A lot of times we don't sit there and actually plan it. And that's what I actually get to. Winning doesn't happen by accident. It happens by a choice. I had to actually sit down as much as I did not like it. I had to sit down and write it out. And it looks different every season. My son's going to be out of school very soon. And so once he's out of school, what does that look like? And so you have to have that meeting with yourself. And that's what me and my husband do. And so I've adapted his ways and it actually works. And I don't feel stressed and I don't feel overwhelmed. And I don't push myself outside of those areas. I just be floating around because I'm like, what can I do with my time? I love it. I love it. Because... 
you're speaking to my heart when you say same thing with me and my husband. He is the let's have a schedule, let's make a plan. And I'm like, let's just be free. And so having that balance of both, giving yourself that, like you said, 10 to 2, this is what's happening. And I don't need a to-do list of a million things I need to do during the, that block of time. And planning is where the success happens. And yes. then you can give yourself grace when all the other things are happening because you did from 10 to two, you did what you said you were going to do. Yes. And then you're, you're able to celebrate your wins instead of looking at all the things you didn't do. Yes. I always say a to-do list. I know that a lot of people is like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. And it stays in their head. Mm -hmm. I'm not putting more than five things. And it's the top five things. So as I told you guys, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I work out with a group of women in the fit and thick club. So I do that. I do have my devotional time. And then I write down the five things that I have to do that are like, because you're best in the morning mentally. And everything else, if those are the things that I get through, then that's it. But if I know it's my work day, then I'm not mixing other things in my work day besides go pick up my kids, besides invest in my marriage, like all of those different things. Or I can actually be on the phone with my girlfriends on these particular days because I'm done with work. Or yeah. you know, I can go for a lunch date with someone or I can go network with someone. Those are days are really set and so it sound crazy in the beginning because I'm like, listen, I was a colorist. I speak in colors, but all this structure is not for me. <laughs> you know, that's why we're hairstylists. We like that freedom. That's why, you know, we want it to be flexible. But I realized it's it's actually a recipe for disaster if you're trying to get somewhere. And this is why so many hairstylists kind of keep the hairstylist hat on because we move from that emotional part instead of from the structure part. Mm -hmm. And it, it actually, we don't get as far as we we want to get because we haven't sat down and had that meeting with ourselves. Yes. So I love that plan. Mm. And then give yourself that time for freedom too. It sounds yeah. like you don't have to have it moment by moment. It's just like mm. the important things. Like you're saying that top five things that I need to do and I'm not going to mix in my work day, doing the laundry, cleaning and doing mm -hmm. all the things I'm going to do what needs to get done. And yeah. then I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah. yes, I did the best I could. Because so often it's so easy for us to just beat up on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Big time. And in my group coaching calls, we start with what are we celebrating, mm -hmm. right? And then we do your grow and glow moments. Where mm -hmm. could you have grown? Where are you glowing at? Mm -hmm. Instead of like good and bad, because I know words are very powerful yes. and we abuse them, right? We can speak more death in our lives than we could, right? We are like the the queens of like, you know, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. You know, sometimes you say, how is someone doing? You really want to know and they just tell you everything that they didn't do. It's like, girl, do you uh -huh. have, what did you talk about yourself? Like, could you give me one thing that you did great? I try to be that mirror for my students to start our calls like that so that they are not just so focused on the problem, but they're focused more on the solution. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes as women, we are always focused on the problem instead of the solution. And I think that's a good way of um, training your brain to think more positive too. If you got a social circle that's like, girl, what'd you do today? It was great. I did this. I did that. It becomes the culture for you to talk more life into yourself than more death into yourself. So, yes. and that's how you stre strengthen that muscle too, while you're in the waiting season, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> while you're like planted, that's, it's truly, truly important. Yes, words are so important. Like you were saying, you could either speak death into your life or you could speak complete life. And I love mm -hmm. how you were saying to growth and glow to yeah. celebrate those. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be bad or good. It doesn't have to be awful days or happy days. You could say, I love the grow and glow. Yeah. Where do you have room to grow? Because then you're searching for solutions and your mind will do the work. Mm -hmm. If you ask the right questions, you'll find the right answers. So I love that you're speaking to that. So much value. This conversation is so good. I just kept getting chills as you're speaking because it's the truth. And when you hear the truth, it, you can't help but like, oh my gosh, feels so good. So thank you so you're much, welcome. Angelica, for Such speaking. A pleasure truth to us today and sharing how you are doing motherhood entrepreneurship and being of service in this world and i would love to know where our listeners can support you where they can celebrate you and work with you and all that good stuff Awesome. Well, it's been such a pleasure being mm -hmm. here and, and joining this fun podcast because <laughs> I felt like this conversation was truly, truly fun. And I hope that people that are listening find the true value in what we were just talking about, right? Just having a girl chat. Yes. But for those who want to celebrate with me, get to know me a little bit more, I'm kind of everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do host a show, a live show called The Chairs Blueprint for those who are hairstylists that are looking. I partner with other experts that are doing their marketing 
in this world in our industry. So you can find that on YouTube or on Roku TV under Dream World Media Group. You can then go to my website, which is angelicaprather.com. And Prather is spelled with P-R-A-T-H-E-R. And everything on my website is there. You can then enroll in Charger Worth Academy as well. We're currently in open enrollment and I have tons of resources there that you can connect with me. I'm on Instagram, I'm on YouTube. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm pretty much everywhere. I'm just not on TikTok. So just Angelica Prather and you will be able to find me. And I look forward to connecting with you guys. Hit me up in the DMs. I actually respond. I will engage with you. If you have questions or anything, or you just wanted to say hi, come come join me. I'm live every Wednesday and we're in the chat. So you got a question, you can get it answered live. <laughs> I like yes. to have fun with my audience and build community. It's the only reason why I'm successful is because I have community and this mm-hmm. is a place where you can build community. So good. So one last question for you before you leave us. I would love to know what's on your heart right now after having this conversation about that waiting period being planted, that giving yourself the plan to succeed, that visioning, putting yourself there, trying it on. Do you have anything else on your heart that you want to share with the entrepreneur that is listening, the mother that is listening? My final word would be to live out the legacy that you desire and actually create that blueprint. Your failures is actually your success strategy. You just don't know it. And sometimes you could be waiting and you can be feeling like you're failing, but you're actually going to use that as your success. So be gracious to yourself. And I like to change how failure looks in the eyes of motherhood, in the eyes of being a woman, and in the eyes of being a CEO and a hairstylist. Ultimately, your failures become your digital blueprint believe it or not. So be encouraged, be inspired, and I wish you guys all the best. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.